<laughs> All right, here we go, my friends. We are still on the topic of property lines, but this time, <clears throat> as I told you last week, I would show you how to make a property line segment tag from scratch because they don't, they don't ship with Revit. Nobody knows why they don't ship with Revit because that seems like a normal thing that would ship with Revit. So if you're from Autodesk and you're watching this video, why don't you have the left hand talk to the right hand and maybe we can get a project line or project property line segment tag in the next version of Revit. Do you hear me? Okay. But until then, everybody come with me. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to show you how to make one. All right. So where is share your screen? Oh, there's the button. Ha ha. Here we are. <clears throat> now, I believe this is where we left off. Okay. I put segment tags on the property line last week and I put in some setback lines and I just wrote setback, but let's clean this thing up a little bit. Okay. I'm going to get rid of the setback stuff. Okay. So we're left just with the property lines here. Now I want to show you how to make these. I am going to delete the one I've got in this project and make one from scratch so you can see how they work. So here we go. Are you ready? Okay, <clears throat> work with me. I'm going down to families. I'm going down to annotation families. I'm going to scroll down to property line segment tag. I'm going to hit delete and I'm going to get a warning. There are five instances that are about to go bye bye. You can count them one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Oh, gone. So it's out of the project. So you know I'm not cheating. You know I wouldn't cheat. I want to show you guys how to do this stuff right. Okay, we need a brand new family and it needs to be a property line segment tag. So here's how you do it. Mm, pretty simple. We're going to go to file. I'm clicking on file and then I'm going to say new family. Again, it brings us to the templates and we look down here and what we're looking for, we're going to click on annotation. And I already told you that even if you scan through this, you will not find the property line segment tag, but I want you to click on generic tag, not generic annotation. I want you to select generic tag, okay? And hit open, okay? What you're presented with is a crosshair here, which is where the tag actually pops in and a little note that says, don't forget to delete this after you're all done. Well, I'm gonna delete it now. I always delete that first, so I don't forget. Okay, this is ready for us to begin building. And what we need to do is tell this generic tag what it's gonna be used for in the future. So work with me, you come over here to the top left and there's a little icon with a little golden colored folder and we click on that and it is it says that the category of this family is generic model tag but that's not what we want we want to scroll down to there it is property line segment tag and i say okay so what that does is it sets the category so that back in revit it will tag the proper objects and it also gives us the, um, when we go to make the, um, the actual tag, the, what do you call them, labels that pop in automatically, it gives us the proper list of what we would need, okay? So work with me here. I am going to click on create a label. I'm going to click label and I'm going to say, I want to put it right here in the center. Okay. Bam. And now what I was talking about a second ago, this list over here are the objects or the, the actual fields that you can use for property line segments. Those wouldn't have been there if you hadn't switched it from a generic tag to a property line segment tag. Okay. All right. So here's what we need. We need to get 
some info. We need to get some pieces over here. The first thing that we want is we're going to look. We need to look over at our. Um, if you guys remember, the we have a bearing, right? And we have a, either north-south bearing and east-west at the end. So let me just. I'm going to hit cancel for a second. I'll show. I'll go back really fast. Here we go. If you guys recall, okay. I'm going to um, try to pan here. There we go. Okay. Remember, the, the bearing right here has got a north or a south at the beginning, and then it has the bearing number, and then has the east-west at the end. And then underneath it is the distance. Okay? So let's get back to our tag here. And what we want to do, I'm going to go back to create a label, and I'm going to click right in the center. And so the first thing it wanted was what? The north-south toggle. So I'm going to scroll down. Sure enough, NS is in here. I'm going to click this arrow, the green arrow, to add the tag over to my label. La my label. Okay. Now, we want this thing to continue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in there, the north-south label. And in the um, suffix of that, well, I'll, I'll, I'll just go ahead. Let's get the bearing. Watch this. I'm going to look for it with the word bearing. Ah, bearing. We need the bearing. So it's a north-south, and then there's a bearing, and it follows by an east-west. You with me? But I don't want these cramming and crowding each other out. So I want to put a little space in between the north-south and the bearing, and then the bearing to the east-west. Kind of push them out a little bit. And that's with a prefix and a suffix. In the prefix, I'm going to put a space. You see that? I just put a space with the space bar. And then the suffix for the bearing, I'm going to put a space. Okay? So when I say okay, what it's going to do, it's going to run these things in a nice straight line, but a space in between them. So here we go. I'm going to say okay. There it is. See that? It put a little space right there and a little space right there, and it put the bearing in between. And what I do is I've got that sitting right there. It's going to pop in. And this is my line, and I don't want it directly on the line. I want it above. So I'm going to use my arrow keys and move it above, okay? I actually kind of, I'm going to go to edit type on this label and tell it not to be opaque. I want it to be transparent so it doesn't cover up the line in any way, okay? So now that we've got the north-south and then the bearing and the east-west, okay, what we need below the line is the distance. So I'm going to say file, no, no, yeah, create, I mean, a new label. I'm going to put it right here. And this one is, look at that, distance. Boom. But I want this distance to have a suffix of a foot symbol, okay? So I'm going to put a foot symbol, not inches. I just put a foot symbol as my suffix, okay? And I can, with this little button here, edit the units. So I'm going to click on edit units. And I don't want fractional inches in there. I want this to be the survey unit. So I'm going to say, stop using the project settings. Feet and fractional inches are going to be changed to survey feet, US survey feet, or decimal feet if you're in an older version of Revit besides 21, because um, I'm doing this in Revit 2021. I'm going to get my decimals to two spaces. I'm going to route my decimals to two decimal spaces. Okay, and then I'm going to say okay. So now this is set. When I say okay, look, we can give it a sample of 100 feet. Okay, bam. So that's a sample. Okay, and so I'm going to pick it. I'm going to move it up a little bit so that it's there. Look at that. We've got the elements we need for this to work. So I'm going to hit save. And I'm going to save this. I've got, there's the old one sitting in my directory. I'm going to call this, um, I'll call, I'll caps, watch this. Prop line segment tag. So it's got a different name. Prop line segment tag. Save. So I saved it. You can save it on your server wherever you want. Now I'm going to load it into the project and close it. So I know it's going to work. So I've loaded into my project. Okay. And now in my site plan, I'm going to come over here. And I want to label these property lines now, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, look at this. You can go to annotate. 
and you can say tag by category and turn off the leader because you don't want it sitting out here like this, la, 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 la. In fact, you see how it's just shooting off on the side? It is not aligned. If I, well, no leader. Look at this. If I click, you see those guys are not aligned with the property line. The right information is there, friends, but if they're not aligned with the property line. So I got to go fix that family. I'm going to show you how to fix that. You highlight it and you say, edit family. Wait for it. It's a really difficult thing we got to do here. You're going to be scared. Ready? Over in the properties, there's a checkbox. Okay. So in the properties, it says rotate with component. Just check that box in the properties. All right. And once that's checked, this will align to the property line. I'm going to hit save again. Okay. You sure you want to overwrite it? Yes. That's why I hit save. Load it into the project and close it. And overwrite the existing one. Bam! Whoa! Are you kidding me? Do you see that? They automatically aligned. So if I hit TG on my keyboard, that goes for tag. Or I could go to annotate and click tag by category. And so here we go. I'm going to click on this line and look at that. We've got the, um, the nomenclature on that line and this one and this one. And if you look, friends, over here on our image, you'll see that the numbers and the distances are exact for every one of these all the way around. It's fantastic. It works. So that, my friends, is how you make a property line segment tag. Okay. Now, I could say done, and that's, I could say done. I think that I'm going to say done. I want you guys to use this property line segment tag on your property lines. Now, I am going to make a part three to this. I can't believe I'm doing this, but I'm going to, I just want this video to not be too long. It's already 15 minutes. The next video is by special request. Someone said, what if I have a curve property line? What if one of my property lines is not straight? What if there is a radius, a curve? That's what we're going to do in part three. So come back, friends, next week, and we'll have part three of property lines, how to deal with curves, all right? And it's, it's pretty fantastic. You guys are going to actually like the, the, this next video. It's straightforward. Well, I was going to say it's straightforward, but curves are crazy in Revit. And so we have to deal with curves in a different way than we deal with straight lines because they've got more information. We have to know what the radius is. We have to know what the, um, what do you call it? The cord distance is. And we need to know exactly what the bearing is of the cord. And we might even need to know the, the, at the actual angle that is producing this. There's a lot of information on a curve. You can't just say, hey, we got a curve. Okay. So anyway, I'll see you guys next week. Go ahead and build yourself a property line segment tag and load it into your project and use it. And I'll see you next week as we deal with curves. All right. And so until then, you guys have a fantastic week and I'll talk to you very, very soon. All right. Bye-bye.